Hello everyone and welcome to Introduction to R. In this lesson we're going to be covering ANOVA tests, also called the Analysis of Variance, and how to carry out different types of ANOVA tests in R. Now a couple lessons ago we introduced the t-test as a way to check whether the means of two groups differ. The t-test works well when dealing with only two different groups, but sometimes we might want to compare more than two groups at the same time. For example, if we wanted to test whether voter age differs based on some categorical variable like race, we would have to compare means within each level of that grouping. We could carry out a separate t-test for each pair of groups, but when you conduct many different tests like this, you increase the chances of false positives. The analysis of variance, or ANOVA, is a statistical test that allows you to conduct this sort of multiple comparisons across groups all at the same time. So we'll start by looking at the one-way ANOVA test. The one-way ANOVA tests whether the mean of some numeric variable differs across the levels of one other categorical variable. It essentially answers the question, do any of the group means in this variable differ from one another? We won't get into all the details about how to carry out an ANOVA by hand because it involves a lot more calculations than, say, the t-test did. But it's a similar process where you end up going through several calculations to arrive at a test statistic, and then you compare that test statistic to a critical value based on a probability distribution. And in the case of the ANOVA, you're dealing with what's called the F distribution, where you can access the various distribution functions in R using RF, PF, QF, and DF. But we're just going to use automatic built-in functions to do ANOVAs in R for this lesson. So we'll show how to do that below. To carry out an ANOVA in R, you can use the AOV function. And the AOV takes a formula as the first argument where the first Y response variable is a numeric response. And then there's a tilde. And then after the tilde are the categorical variables. Well, when we're doing a one-way ANOVA, the categorical explanatory variables, we're only going to have one because we're doing a one-way test. So let's give an example of doing that by generating some fake voter age and demographic data and then using the ANOVA to compare the ages across those groups. So we're just going to start by setting a seed. This is going to be our fake generated data. So we're just going to be sampling from some different categories here. Um, we're going to use racial demographic categories, and we'll sample from those at some fixed probabilities. We'll do a sample size of 1,000 with replacement. And now we're also going to generate some age data, which is also going to be a sample of 1,000 that are going to be connected to these demographic data. And now we're going to do an ANOVA test where the age data is going to be what our y variable is, so what we're trying to explain, see if there's differences in means across the different categories of the x variable. So you'll note that the way we generated the ages didn't depend at all on the way we generated these categories. We just, cate we just generated each of them in isolation. So since we're comparing these 1,000 samples to these 1,000 samples of categories, and the categories did not influence the generation of the ages at all, we shouldn't detect that there is a difference in the means because they should all have been generated the same way. So let's show how we do the ANOVA in this example anyway, even though we are expecting that we're not going to detect a difference. So to carry out the ANOVA, we'll say AOV in the parentheses. This is going to be our numeric variable. So the age is what we're trying to s explain and see differences on. And then tilde, and then this is our categorical variable. So this was the restored in voter race. We'll store the model and then pull up a summary. So let's run this and see what the result is. So the output here shows us that our test statistic, the F value, is 0.81. And more importantly, the P value here is 0.515, 
Well, if we were trying to do a, an ANOVA test with a 95% confidence level, for instance, we'd need a p-value less than 5% for that to be significant. So this is a very big p-value. So this test result is telling us that the means of the ages don't seem to depend on the categories at all, which we would expect because the way we generated it, they didn't depend on the categories. So now let's see what would have happened if we generated the data in a way where the ages do depend on the categories. This cell here is just showing how we could have manually calculated p-value. We won't actually go into that in this video, but you can check the link in the description if you want to look at that. But now we will go into doing a second ANOVA test. So what we're going to do here is generate ages for the voters in the white category from a different distribution so that the mean should be different. So above, we generated all the ages in the same way with mean 50 and uh, standard deviation 20, I believe. And in this case, we're going to say mean 55 and 20. So the average age for the white voters then will be set a bit higher than the other groups. That is what these lines are doing. So we'll save this as new voter ages. So this is basically the same as the old voter ages, except where the category was white, we are setting the ages based on this new voter age distribution. And we'll just rerun the model, except we'll change the age variable to the new voter ages. We'll, and then we'll pull up a new summary. And since we're generating this from a different distribution, we would expect to see the p-value be lower now. So now to rerun the model, we'll just pass in the new voter ages here and do everything else the same. And we would expect in our result to see a smaller p-value because we did actually have a difference in the way the ages were generated. So let's pull down here. We can see the F statistic value is larger, so that's a good sign. And now our p-value is 0.034. So in this case, if we were doing a ANOVA with a 95% confidence level, this p-value here is below 5%. So in this case, we would reject the null hypothesis that all of the groups have the same average age and say that there is something interesting going on. One of the groups doesn't have the same age as the others, or at least one. Now that brings up an important point. We see this result here where there is a detected difference, and we know that the difference is between the white category and the other groups because we set up the data that way. But if we conducted this test on data where we didn't know what the distributions were that created it, we wouldn't necessarily know which group or if there are multiple groups that caused this result to happen. So in the event that we see a result like this that suggests we should accept an alternative hypothesis, we can go back and do a post hoc test to try to determine which group or groups caused us to find this positive result. Now one possible post hoc test you can perform to try to do this is just to do a separate t-test for every pair of groups. And you can do that in R using the pairwise.t.test function. So we'll show how to do that here. We're just going to say pairwise.t.test. We'll pass in our new voter ages and the categorical variable as the two arguments. And initially, we're going to set this p.adjust to none. That's saying we aren't going to do any adjustment to the p-values for multiple comparisons. So let's run this and see what the results here are. So you can see we're given a little table here for all the pairwise interactions and then different p-values for each interaction. And this can allow us to investigate which groups actually had the biggest differences that caused that ANOVA to throw a positive result. And if we just inspect this a little bit, we can see the, the p-value between the white and black averages is very low. So that's one of the things we should look at. And also the p-value between the white and Hispanic groups was very low. So those seem to be the two differences in the mean ages that were the most extreme. Interestingly, the differences between the white and Asian, white and other groups weren't actually that large in terms of p-values. So that gives us a good idea of where we'd look into the means actually being different. 
Now one problem with our output here is that since we didn't set the p dot adjustment to anything other than none, we might have a problem with multiple comparisons. Basically, every time we run another t-test, there's some chance that we'll find a result that seems significant just due to randomness. And if we do enough t-tests, we'll eventually find some that have p-values below 5% just by virtue of doing a lot of t-tests and not by virtue of those test results actually being something significant. So a way we can account for that is by changing this p.adjust argument to something else. One we can change it to is Bonferroni, which is just a conservative correction for multiple comparisons, which will adjust our significance level alpha by the number of comparisons we're making. So if we wanted a test with a significance level of 5% and we were comparing things five times, or doing five different tests, well then we'd have to divide that by five, and really then we end up using a significance level of 1%. So it makes, you have to have results that are even more extreme in order to throw a positive result. So we'd need p-values a lot less than 5% in order for it to throw a positive result or be something that's interesting just because if we're doing many, many comparisons, we'll often end up finding things just by randomness. So let's try rerunning the function again. We're just passing everything in the same, but we're changing this p-value adjustment to the Bonferroni correction. And when we run this, you can see that the p-values are all quite a bit higher than they were before. And in this case, there isn't actually anything that's significant at the 5% level. A lot of these are actually one now, and the two that were significant before are still pretty small, so this might cause us to raise an eyebrow a little bit, but if we're trying to deal with a 5% significance level, well, th these p-values are actually bigger than that. So in that case, we might still uh, accept the null hypothesis. It should be noted though, that this Bonferroni correction, dividing by the number of different tests we're doing, tends to be a pretty conservative way of adjusting the p-value and might end up not detecting results that are actually significant where we, where we should be accepting the null hypothesis. This toy example is actually a case of that because we know that the ages were actually generated differently for the white group. So we should be accepting an alternative hypothesis here. An alternative that is somewhat less conservative than the Bonferroni correction is known as the Tukey's test. You can carry out the Tukey test in R using a built-in function called Tukey HSD in capital letters. So to do that, all we have to do is invoke that function and pass in our analysis of variance ANOVA model into it. And so after running that, we'll again get a table of two-way comparisons between different groups and adjusted p-values for each one in this last column here. And you can inspect that to see if you get any p-values that are significant at the level you wanted to. You can notice that these p-values are a bit smaller than the ones with the Bonferroni correction table we did above, but still they're quite a bit higher than they were without any correction. And we're seeing for the groups that had the most significant p-values, they're still maybe a little bit higher than 5%. So with this adjustment, we might end up not accepting the alternative hypothesis. That said, given the result of this table, we can be pretty confident that it is the white group that seems to be different from the others because the two p-values we have that are pretty low both involve that group. So though that is probably the group that is causing our original ANOVA test to have a positive result and say that we should accept the alternative hypothesis. So this was an example of a one-way ANOVA test where we are comparing means across one categorical variable. It's also possible to run a two-way ANOVA test. A two-way ANOVA extends the analysis of variance to cases where you have two categorical variables of interest. For example, with one-way, we checked whether voter age varies across one demographic category like race, 
but we could also conduct a two-way ANOVA test and pass in another categorical variable and supply it to the analysis of variance function, which will allow us to see whether interactions between those two categories have an effect on the average. For instance, maybe things don't vary across just race on its own, but if you also break that down by gender or some other category, maybe someone that is both, say, Hispanic and female has a different average age of a voter than something from a different category broken down by two different categorical variables. So let's investigate this and how to do a two-way ANOVA in R using our same examples, but this time we're going to add in gender as an additional categorical variable. So here we're just going to make some gender data that is going to be a thousand samples again, just like we had with our original data. We're just gonna sample these randomly 50-50 between male and female. But now we are going to alter our age data based on the gender. So basically what we're going to do is say, for voters who are male, we're going to subtract 1.5 from their ages, and if they are not male, we're going to add 1.5 to the ages. So we'll start by using this data to run a two-way ANOVA, but without any interaction between demographics and gender. So to do that, we're just going to use our AOV function again. The Y variable is our ages, so those are going to be passed in here again. And then tilde, we're going to pass in two variables this time. So we want to see how that's affected by the voter race, and then plus another variable, the voter gender. And we'll run that in a summary and see what the result is. So in the resulting table, we can see that now we have two variables listed and different p-values for each one. Since the voter race wasn't affecting age at all, the p-value for that, again, is quite high. So that is not something that's looking like it's having an effect on average ages. But under the voter gender variable, we can see the p-value is pretty low, 0.029. So this is a result where we would accept the alternative hypothesis that there's something interesting going on. The genders seem to have different average ages. And we know that that's the case because we set it up so that the females should have about three more years in age on average than the males. Now, the way we did this ANOVA test, we were testing two different categorical variables at the same time, but we weren't checking for interactions between them. So we kind of tested race on its own and gender on its own, but we didn't check whether gender and race combined were having an effect. If we want to do that, we can add an interaction term to our ANOVA formula that will allow us to break things down by both categories at the same time. So if we wanted to do that, we would supply an additional explanatory term to our formula. So we'll run it again, but we'll add that extra term. So we're going to say analysis of variance again. We're still just interested in ages. We want to look at the race plus gender again, but now we're going to add this interaction term between race and gender. So we're gonna say plus, and then in parentheses, the two categorical variables multiplied together. So basically the interaction between voter race and voter gender, does that have any effect? So does race on its own have an effect, gender on its own, and also the interaction between these two variables. So we'll run this again and rerun a new summary. And now we're going to see another line of output for whether the interaction between gender and race has any effect. Now, since we know that the way we generated the data, we didn't have any interaction built into the way it was generated. We shouldn't see any significant effect here. And when we look at the p-value, that is confirmed because we have a pretty high p-value telling us that there doesn't seem to be any effect of the interactions. It's just the gender variable on its own that seems to have a difference in average ages. Now let's go ahead and alter the age data so that there is a difference 
based on an interaction between these two variables so we can see what that would look like in the output and how we can investigate which interaction is causing a positive test result. So let's scroll down and just alter our age data a bit. We're going to make a new age variable called interaction age. And we're going to set this different based on some of our categories. So if our voter gender is female and the voter race is Asian, we're going to set those data points to having the same age as before, but plus 10. And otherwise, it's just going to be the voter age. So basically, for all the Asian female data points, their average is going to be increased by 10 and everything else is staying the same. So now we should see for this group, female Asians, they should have significantly different means now from all the other groups. And now we'll carry out the ANOVA test again and try to see whether we can find that this interaction is going to be resulting in different averages. So to do that, we're just going to rerun the same thing entirely. It's just we're changing the data we're dealing with to this new altered data that we made. All the other arguments should be the same. So we'll rerun that and then call up the summary of the model again. And now with our new data where we have a group that's a bit different, we see that the voter race, voter gender interaction term now has a p-value of 0.02. And you'll notice that the p-values for the other categories has cha have changed as well because we changed data for some of those things too. So if we see a result like this, we might not be 100% sure, again, where the positive test was coming from. We know that it's a result of the fact that we added 10 years for people in the Asian female category. But if we didn't know that because we didn't generate the data ourselves, we'd have to, say, do another post hoc test in order to try to figure out which combination of variables was causing this. So again, just like with the one-way ANOVA test, we can use the Tukey HSD function, passing in our analysis of variance model to pull up the interaction terms and p-values for each one as a post hoc test. So we'll show how to do that here. It's the same thing as we did before. We're just dealing with a different analysis of variance model. So we're going to get more output this time. So in the resulting table this time, we're gonna have a lot more output because we're looking at all of the categories for both of the variables plus all of the interaction terms between the categories. So this is gonna result in a lot of comparisons that is being adjusted for in the adjusted p-values. And we can look through this table and try to determine where the various interactions are throwing positive or low p-value results. So if we're looking at voter race, well, it seems that the difference between white and Asian, that's pretty huge with a small p-value. And that's really the only one we're noticing here. I guess Hispanic and Asian is also significant at the 5% level, but this one is especially small. So that seems like it's certainly a difference. When we look at the voter gender, that doesn't seem like there's a big difference there. When we regenerated those interaction ages, we took away that big gender difference we had put in for the first example. So that is to be expected that we wouldn't see a big difference there, even though for the Asian female group, they do have a higher average. So we would expect females to have a bit higher average, but there's just not that many members of that group. So it looks like it wasn't enough in order to make this throw a positive result here. But now we have all the interactions. So now looking at the interaction terms, the black females compared to Asian females, that has a very low p-value. The next entry, Hispanic females versus Asian females, another low p-value. And if we look here, it appears that all of the Asian female comparisons to pretty much every other group have pretty low p-values. So that's definitely gonna cause us to raise some eyebrows and think that maybe it's the Asian female group that's causing the ANOVA to throw a positive result here. And if we inspect the other group comparisons, like look at these, 99, 99, like these are really high p-values because we have a lot of comparisons. The adjustment means these are adjusted up even more from what their basic form would be. So they're all very large. So like none of these other comparisons are raising eyebrows at all. There's nothing significant there, but the 
Asian female to any other group are all very small. So that's a telltale sign that this particular interaction is what's probably causing us to see a positive result. So to wrap up, in this lesson, we looked into the one-way and two-way ANOVA tests as ways to check whether a numeric variable varies according to the levels of either one or two categorical variables or interactions between those two variables. And R makes it really easy to perform ANOVA tests and post hoc tests because it has functions for those built right into the base language. No need to load any libraries or packages at all. Now in the next lesson, we're going to move on from statistical inference testing to the final topic of this guide, which is going to be predictive modeling in R. So in the next lesson, we're going to learn about the basics of linear regression and how to run linear regressions in R. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.